Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore. This is the third instalment to the... Can I say the Fantastic Beasts saga? It's a prequel to the Harry Potter shows, but only the first one was really about Fantastic Beasts. It then kind of changed rapidly into a story about Dumbledore and Grindelwald. But I guess they're kind of stuck with that Fantastic Beasts name now. But yeah, first one really enjoyed, second one really didn't. And now we have this shift in focus more towards Dumbledore and his past and a supposedly resolution of the previous two films. It's not bad, it's certainly better than Crimes of Grindelwald, although that's not really saying much. I think that's a good place to go from though. The second film felt far too convoluted, very unfocused story, and it just lacks that overall Harry Potter charm. Here, director David Yates smartly decides to interject a little bit more humour into it this time, to juggle the so-called serious story with a bit more entertainment and overall engagement. As a whole though, this trilogy's kind of a mess. The story itself is more focused here, but in order to achieve that, we have 15 to 20 minutes at the start of this film, basically reminding us and recapping us of what happened in the second film. A, because it thinks that we've forgotten it was that uninteresting, and B, it also wants to slightly overwrite some of the facts we learned from the previous films, so that this film doesn't really have to worry about anything the second film brought into fruition. So you have this inconsistent storytelling. It's clearer here, but it's still not great. The final act in particular, I just felt lacked a lot of payoffs that the second film and the first two thirds of this film was building us up for. It's a bit spoiler territory and I'll keep it to a minimum, but I will touch on it a little bit more as we go down the line. I suppose the first big thing to talk about here is that there's no more Johnny Depp. Arguably controversial decision to get rid of him over this whole Amber Heard court case thing going on at the moment. I personally wasn't a big fan of Johnny Depp as Grindelwald anyway, but it's still not nice to have everything going on that it is and it's always a bit shady when you have to drop someone from a movie. The silver lining is that he was replaced by Mads Mikkelsen and he's just such a great actor and he's a much better fit for this character I believe. He doesn't do anything extraordinary per se but he's just a much nicer fit into this movie. I felt like he was just a better choice off the bat anyways and probably should have been Grindelwald from the very first film. We also get some returning characters although aside from Catherine Waterston, they've weirdly enough sacked off her character, although not entirely. She's still in it, but in like one or two scenes max. But considering her sister is such a huge piece in here and she joined Grindelwald at the very end of the last film, I don't know why they didn't make her an integral part of this story because it was very much needed. Instead, we get a few different side plots that don't really have many payoffs or relevance. Dan Fogler is great as Jacob Kowalski, but, and I love the humour and the entertainment he brings into this movie, but he just doesn't really feel like he's relevant to the story. The movie clutches at straws to try and give us an excuse, but it doesn't really pay off at all. For all the things the movie was trying to hint about him, he's kind of just there in the end. Also, same with that guy. I, you could take his entire character out of this film and the story would not change in the slightest. They left out that whole thing with Nagiru from the last episode and they've basically benched Ezra Miller's entire character barring one or two bits. Which is also weird because the first two films brought him up to be this huge central piece and he wasn't really doing that much here to be honest. In fact, the only side plot that I truly enjoyed was the bit with the brothers. Eddie Redmayne is back as new and I actually like the fact that he's our central character of sorts. Where I said that it has more humour in the story and it feels a little bit more like a Harry Potter film, it's the scenes that he's in. There's a scorpion prison scene that I also thought was really entertaining, but it's just story-wise not that integral. Another silver lining is Jude Law and he is just a great choice for Dumbledore. I absolutely loved every minute of him in this film and I just wish there was more of him or more from him. You know, it's Dumbledore in his younger days and it's building up to his clash against Grindelwald who's threatening the wizard and muggle world. I guess it just didn't quite live up to it, I guess. And it's all these things, all this combined together that just makes the audience feel like the studio doesn't know what it wants to do with this this trilogy. And if the studio has no idea what it wants from the films, how is the audience expected to know either? They've still got two films and I honestly don't know what they're planning to do with those. Half of me thinks they're gonna scrap them entirely. I guess that will be dependent on box office returns, but it's, still better than the last one. Not as great as the first though, so if you're sitting on the fence at the moment as to whether to go watch this in the cinemas, 
hopefully that will be a good way to measure it. It's definitely more focused in the story and is easier to follow, but it still fails to deliver on a lot of these payoffs that was built up from previous movies and B-plots in this film. It just made a lot of that feel unnecessary in the end, unfortunately. And despite those comments I've just made, if you're a Harry Potter fan, then you're still gonna enjoy this in the cinema. So yeah, fan I'm just gonna call it Fantastic Beasts 3. Have you already seen it? It came out in the cinemas last weekend. If you have, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. If you like this review, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It always helps me out. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime, and video games. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye-bye.